Hey gang, welcome to another draft here on the new client. This is Ryan from Mana Bluff. Let's try to actually pick the cards that we want to pick today. If you saw my last draft, I miss well, I didn't misclick. I just didn't know how this beta client worked. Um, I think I'm leaning towards Golden Hind here, though Colossal Heroic's also quite nice. Uh, Dictate of Twin Gods, not what I'm caring about too much. Uh, Nyx Weaver, quite grand, but of course double colored. Blood Grace Hoplite, Magma Spray, Swift Claws, Elsiads, Grove Dancer, hopefully will come back. But yeah, I'm happy with Golden Hind over Colossal Heroics, even though, again, this guy's pretty good. Let's get my Hind on. Let's do the Hind thing. Don't care about this little foil dude. Golden Hide Ox is okay, but it's not, like, insane. I forget about Swarmborn Giant, that that guy even exists. I don't like him. I'd play him, but I'm not going to pick him that highly. Goodness, this pack is way worse than the pack I just opened. I think I'm just going to take the Thunder Hoof, which is okay. I don't know. That would just be to stay on green, but then it's probably better just to get the Golden Hide Ox, which is still, like, decent. Um... I seem out of just taking a green card to stay on color, but nah. We'll start moving into another color. I like green, black, and green, blue, and those are also kind of like the best cards. Uh, next, with like a Hoplite, a Pin of the Earth, Nyx Infusion, but no, never mind. I'm, I'm just going back and forth a whole bunch. I'm taking the Thunder Hoof just to stay on green. Nothing else was like that powerful that's worth like jumping into. On the other hand, Fleet Feather Cockatrice is ridiculously powerful, and I'm happy to jump into a little bit of blue with it. I am passing a Ravenous Luke Rakota, which isn't like a huge signal, but is a good card. Feast of Dreams also going around, so I am noticing that black's a bit open, because I think that's going a little bit late. Good blue as well, but I'm really happy to jump in on this Cockatrice here. Uh, and also happy to see what other colors are open. Really great to see a Sigiled Starfish. That's a late sign that blue's open. Colossal Rooks also. I think we're starting to love to be in the colors that we want to be in. Not much black. Definitely no red. White's blah. Yeah. I really like these first couple picks. Wow, late, late Feast of Dreams could be right to start jumping into black, but again, we just have, like, solid enough um, cards, and the more flash creatures you have anyway, the better. So, uh, there's really no reason, even though Feast is just above and beyond better than everything else in the pack. I'm happy to take Cloak Siren, but blue and black are the colors I'm really seeing open, so maybe green won't be as strong of our color, and we'll stay in on uh, the blue plan. These are the same colors that I recorded last time, but whatever. That's how I think the draft is going at the moment. I forget what Armory does. Oh, yes. Nothing I care too much about. Boink. N another Cloaked Siren or a Basset Tower Archer. I do love me some two drops, but I really don't know if I'm going to be um, heavy, if I'm going to be enough green to make the Archer work. Plus, like I was saying, multiple Flash creatures make um, all of each other so much better. So I'm down just to stay on base blue with a little bit of green at the moment. Uh, Panoply or Market Festival? Deserter's Quarters is an option. It's definitely playable. It's just so slow, but it can come out of the sideboard. Maybe we'll just take Panoply in case we want a combat trick. Market Festival, at this point, I'm not really looking to do. Wow. Okay, so maybe I do have too many Cloaked Sirens, uh, but I'm still going to take it here over, like, a Gold Forge Sentinel. In green, we should have some six drops, although this is perfectly fine, but, I mean, our, our flyers are better anyway. Uh, I'll take font. It might, it might make the deck. Hopefully it won't. I'm not looking to play the font by any means. Just kind of seeing what's left in the pack. Ooh, bunch of dirtles. I'm pretty sure I'm never going to play God Hunter Octopus, but I like cutting the color. Pensive Minotaur is pretty decent, but... I think I'll take Font of Fertility. It's actually a pretty good card. We might want it. Crufix Insight. No thank you. But again, cutting. For the sideboard, nice to have Desecration Plague come around. Yeah, so green ended up starting to get um, cut. Someone to our right is green. Oh, I get to look and see who that is now. I forget. Um, where am I? I'm the dragon. I always forget who I am. I don't know what my avatar is. I never really pay attention. So it looks like... Uh, Douchey love or douche love 
uh, is probably in green. If not there, then Chop Sammy. So I won't be getting a whole lot of green in the last pack, which is a bummer, but I think it's going to be worth playing for this Cockatrice if green is enough open here in the Journey into Nyx, uh, not Journey into Nyx, into the Born of the Gods pack. Because uh, I do really like the power level of Golden Hind and the Cockatrice. But blue is just our, our base right now. Going into the second pack. Alright, so here's some interesting decisions. If I want to try to start picking up my green, I do like Swordwise Centaur here. It just starts committing me to the double green. Uh, but it fills out the two drop slot nicely. Archetype of Imagination is nice and powerful, especially in blue green, but I also have plenty of flyers. It might even table. I anticipate seeing our Corsa Tides come about. And there's also the option to take Sun and Storm or Aspect, which are also very good cards. But I'm going to go ahead and take the Centaur here. We'll pass the Silent Sentinel and their really nice red cards. Red was also pretty well cut. But I've got a feeling that this is where I want to pick up some green. And, uh, Despite the double green casting cost, I like Swordwise Centaur quite a bit. I want to, it looks like if I'm going green, I'm going to want to be able to play early green anyway. Ooh, Raised by Wolves and Nessian Wilds Ravager. Boom. Uh, maybe the Triton will table. What do I want more of? I think I want Raised by Wolves more, especially because I have so many um, flyers that this, this guy is kind of going to be insane. It's pretty rare that I would take, I don't know if it would be rare, it's interesting that I'm considering Race by Wolves over Nessie and Wilds, which is still just like an awesome card. Uh, but I think this is enough of a blow. And with like things like Thurry's Band Thunderhoods, and like I said, the Flyers, I got a feeling that Raised by Wolves is going to be pretty awesome. Because uh, more than likely, this just becomes a 12-12 that can be like chumped a bunch. Uh, I'm pretty sure it rarely actually like eats a dude. But being able to put a bunch more power on a Flyer is pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm taking Raised by Wolves there. Snake is unexciting, especially since I just picked up my third 5-drop. There's nothing really powerful in this pack besides Vanguard, and of course I'm not going to jump into white for that, so we'll just take our Divination here. Not too sure if it's making the deck, but that'll be a decision later. Our main darks right now are just our 1-drops and our 3-drop. Aside from that, I like where the deck's shaping up. We do want to see maybe that Sudden Storm table or pick one up. Uh, I'm going to be looking for any kind of like removal spell. That's going to be kind of important. I can take this Temple of Enlightenment if I want to splash. I'm not looking for this Chorus of Tides. I think one of them is going to come back. Uh, that one that I opened possibly, or just something later on. And with our multiple four drops, uh, I actually prefer, of course, the Cloaked Siren over Chorus of Tides. We're not doing a major heroic thing. The Scry isn't that important. And being able to flash Fly 3 2 is better. And we're just filled up there. So this is really redundant in my deck. Aspect isn't insane in my deck right now, but again, I'm not too sure. Nah, eh, screw it, Temple. I mean, it's an on-color Scryland. It's going to be good. The thing is, like, I do kind of have combat tricks, and Aspect of Hydra can get really good if we start getting a lot more um, green online. Actually, no, I, I just convinced myself. Uh, I want to cut green a little bit to kind of punish the person to my right. Just a little bit. I'm not trying to, like, influence the person to my right. Whoa, hello, late fall hammer. Uh, but I kind of feel like this will be nice. Here's a nice Nyxborn Wolf. Interesting there's not more blue coming around. Could take the Stratus Walk. We're not heroic, so it's not insane. Uh, and generally in blue-green, just getting your big beef flyers online is pretty nice. But we need a 3-drop. Nyxborn Wolf is nice and versatile. And we have plenty of flyers. We have four solid flash flyers. I don't need to make more flyers into the air. And again, the little bonus of cutting the uh, the green from the person on my right going, What? Why is there no green? Keep in mind, I am aware that we're not going to get a lot of green in the uh, in the Theros pack. We might have some. It's not like it was like super cut, but still. Fall of the Hammer, though. Man, it's late. Same with Asphyxiate. We knew black was open to our right. I'm surprised it's also still floating around. Maybe this is just a deep pack. Not too sure. Um, so there's definitely a card here for us, but none of them are like that exciting. I'm not too stoked on the Disciple. Again, I'm good on fives. I don't need to like fill up on five drop slots. Uh, plus, it's double blue, even though we're probably going to need to play double blue and double green um, at some point through this draft. Considering Crypsis or Flitterstep Eidolon, this being our first six drop, but we're not really looking for evasion. Starbreaker, I don't really care about. Crypsis is okay. Uh, we already have one aspect and a panoply, so we're not like dying for combat tricks. 
yeah, all this is just kind of like mediocre junk into the deck. So what do I want to round out more? I think I'll take the Eidolon. I don't know if it's going to be played, but it's like something that's a little bit... It's, it does something that's a little bit harder to uh, replace. Mortal's Resolve or Snake of the Golden Grove. We'll take another random combat trick because, again, our fives are just fine. Here I will take Stratus Walk over Sphinx's Disciple. Archetype Wield. That's kind of grand. This is a six that I do want versus another aspect of Hydra. And now we got another aspect of Hydra, so that's actually okay. And nothing matters, so we'll just cut somewhat playable cards. Sky Reaping for the board, even though it's probably never happening. So we have a lot of combat tricks, not all of them are going to be played. Uh, I'm definitely glad I grabbed this Eidolon over whatever that other combat, the Crypsis. Now that we have like Mortals Resolve. Charging Baja. So yeah, starting to round things out pretty a-okay. Wouldn't mind like a Voyaging Seder or two. Probably be fighting over those for whoever I am uh, drafting next to. But that's okay. But the Voyaging Seder will really help smooth out this uh, double green, double blue. It's all in the later part of the turns, so it's not super worrisome. Uh, wow, what a great pack. Uh, definitely taking the Emissary here. It's obviously insane. Uh, would could consider taking the Corsair, the Dread, or the Sedge Scorpion, or the Agent, just because I need a little bit more on, on the low drops, but there's no way I'm passing up Shelly with that power level. It makes me excited to know, I mean, one of these is going to table, and any one of these four cards would make my deck. I would like the Agent the least, of course, but I'm in the colors to make it a good card, uh, so I'm not, not bummed about it. Pretty easy pick. They're also all like the best cards in the pack. Uh, God's Willing, the exception is also pretty nice. Ooh, a Bow and a Horizon Chimera. I would love the Chimera because my whole Flash theme is pretty okay, but Bow is just like insane. Obviously snapping that guy up. So maybe the person on my right isn't green. Maybe it's two down. I don't know. Uh, Chimera might even table if I'm the only blue-green drafter. So that would be in uh, quite fun. Savage Search probably will, but I don't really need more combat tricks. It's definitely a better combat trick than what I have. But now my aspect of Hydras are getting like pretty nice with a Bow of Nylea, Sword of I Centaur, and Raised by Wolves, so... Yeah! Thank you! Ooh. Okay, where, what am I actually playing? I'm at 12 creatures. The only reason why Horizon Chimera isn't awesome is because uh, my 4-drop slot's pretty cluttered up. The, I, and I might take Trying Tactics, but no, like, I have enough combat tricks. Yeah, the... the, the the double targeting is pretty nice, but Chimera is really powerful enough. We're just really stuck on the fours. That means I'm prioritizing any Voyaging Slayer that comes around, uh, for sure, because that's kind of key here. I am going to go ahead... Uh, bummer, we didn't get it. So I think I'll take the Corsair over the Scorpion. That might be right, just because I need more threes. Sedge Scorpion's pretty nice in general. This is not a Feral Invocation deck, though it's fine. Horizon Scholar, meh. I uh, might even get the other one back if it's a good card, but I only have one Golden Hind right now. I'm just gonna, um... Maybe, oh, maybe play the font to kind of ramp into some of the bigger stuff, I don't know. My twos and threes are both low. I'm not saying I'm not playing the cards I'm putting in my sideboard right now, I'm just kind of looking at my creature curve. Uh, and like, kind of the premium versions of them. It's like Archetype doesn't do a whole lot besides clear blockers away. I think I do just want stuff on the ground to be able to block, so I'm going to take the Sedge Scorpion, because I think what I'm weak to is just like big old butts on the ground, whereas normally I'd rather have like a, a, a Nessian Corsair. I think in this case I'm looking for the Sedge Scorpion. Chimera's okay, but again, we've got our Flyers, we got our Fives, I might even see another one later. I think I want the Artisan Sorrow, possibly for a main deck removal spell. I have zero removal or bounce or anything, I just have some combat tricks and some great creatures. So this is going to be a little more important in what my deck is looking for to, uh, you know, sort of round things out. Here's an interesting, interesting choice. Wavecrest Triton is grand, but it's a little late in the draft for me to, like, have a lot to do with it. I only have one Nyxborn Wolf. Oh, I guess the Emissary, too. Uh, so I have two cards plus the hidden, or the, uh, 
my idol on here, that bestow on the Wavecrest Trident for later great value, aside from that two combat tricks. Uh, but it does help gum up the ground. I think I'm going to take it over the ordeal. Uh, I don't have a lot of early drops, and yeah, I have a lot of flyers for the deal to go on, but they're all kind of getting in the late game. I think what I need for more consistency is this Triton. It would be great if I had the Triton and then picked up the ordeal, but... Life did not go that way. I think I'm going to get the Hunter for the sideboard. Really good red cards here, though. And we'll just take it. Um, nothing here I'm going to be playing. I guess I'll take the Giant for the side. I can't imagine what kind of deck I'd want to bring it in against. Sedge so Scorpion tabled. Which is good. I'm definitely grabbing it here over the, the Scholar. It does make me like kind of wish I had had the Courser um, here. It does mean that the two three two like the two uh, the the Agent of Horizons and the uh, the Nessian Courser out of this pack like were picked up. So that's kind of interesting. But this is what my deck kind of wants, so it's fine. We'll get some Death Touch on. I'll take a Bronze Sable instead of a Chimera. Our fours are grand. Really bummed. There's no. Um... Is there anything I care about here? Does Viper's Kiss get me in any way? Not really. I mean, sure, it kills a Sedge Scorpion. Eh, I'll take it. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I was when there's no Voyaging Slayer. That would have been, like, just absolutely insane in this deck. Uh, always would love some Nessie Naps, but I, I'm not surprised that those are, are gone. So I'm going to put this directly in the sideboard. Yeah. So I guess you can do that. Okay, so my creatures are insane, but I have very little ways to interact with... Uh, with my opponent's creatures, so that can be worrisome. But these Aspect of Hydras, I think, are going to be pretty decent. Not not amazing, I'm not like super base base green, but I think they will end up being alright. So I'm going to pause and then bring you back after I do some basic deck building. Okay, here's the initial breakdown of the deck. We're at 24 cards right now. This wants to be a 23 card deck with 17 lands. Uh, really nice creature curve, like I was saying in the draft, like What's really nice about this deck is the quality of the creatures are really nice. Uh, basically, we have a Bronze Sable and a Thunder Hoof that are kind of like meh, but they're still very playable. Uh, what's really weak in my deck is removal. So that's something I want to be aware of. I do think these aspects are going to be good. And I'm going to keep in some of the dorky removal spell, or not, uh, dorky uh, combat tricks, Mortals Resolve and Panoply, because I'm going to have to use those as combat tricks, I'm gonna, or as removal spells. Wow, I need to get my language correct. This is what I, I have to work with. These are the tools that I got um, when I picked up in the draft, so that's what I'm going to have to be aware of, that my creatures have to be removal. Uh, also, in a sense, Wave Crash, Triton, and Fairy Spent Thunder get much better the more combat tricks I have. You'll notice in the sideboard I had pulled out the Stratus Walk and the two fonts. We're not really ramping anything. Our, our, we have one six drop. Yeah, we have some bestow, but like that should be fine with our Starfish and our Hind. We're good. Um, and then also the the Stratus Walk and the font, like, I already have a Divination to draw cards. All of my important threats are Flyers and Flash Flyers at that. Surprised that there wasn't any uh, um, Counterspells. That would have gone really nice in this deck if I had, had uh, seen some of the Counterspells come around. Um, Eidolon, again, I don't need Evasion, and then this guy is for the sideboard. And a bunch of Dorks at 6 that I don't feel I need. Uh, so, I'm just going to cut the Sable, which is really just there as, like, a 2-drop. I'll bring it in against an ag like super aggressive because I feel I need it, but having two scorpions and at least a couple of decent things to do early on is fine. I would maybe take out the thunder hoof instead, but it's a perfectly fine five drop at three four. And the fact that I do have a couple of combat tricks and a couple of bestows I mean it could pretty reliably um, get to something kind of huge. So that's where I'm going to do it or keep the deck at. We'll add our lands. What am I thinking? Ten seven? Is that right? I think it's more like a nine eight. No. 10-7 seems right, especially with, with the Goldline and Starfish. We have a lot of, like, double green, and uh, there's only one double blue, which we're getting to later on. So, yeah, I like the 10-7 as well. And that's the deck. Let's head off to round one.